<clears throat> I'm going to um, give you a brief rundown of, uh, of a, our clinical trial. I have, these are my disclosures. Um, sorry, I'll try uh, to speak louder. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Uh, these are my disclosures and uh, none of them are relevant to my talk today. Uh, and um, this is the support for the study that I'm going to talk about. So, as you all know, autism <clears throat> spectrum disorder has a wide range of abilities and disabilities. Sorry, I'm trying to uh, get, <laughs> get this focus so that I can see and, and be heard. Uh, and uh, there are a number of social and behavioral issues uh, with uh, ASD at the, at the more severe end of the spectrum that can uh, severely impair the child's ability or the individual's ability to function successfully and independently uh, in, the, in the world. And um, this can be the case in uh, social, academic, uh, and career-related realms. And with children uh, who have more severe uh, behavioral uh, <clears throat> and social and communication issues, uh, there are uh, relatively few options in terms of uh, treatment. There, the mainstay of treatment is behavioral, uh, and uh, uh, educational, but in terms of uh, medications, there are um, actually no approved medications for the uh, core symptoms of autism. And as you've heard over uh, several times, there are only a couple of medications that are actually approved for treatment of uh, behavioral issues in, in autism. Um, and some of those, and those medications can cause a lot of side effects. So uh, a lot of parents are reluctant to, to use them and uh, they don't always work. They may have um, side effects that prohibit um, increasing the dose. Um, so these all highlight, these all highlight the need uh, <clears throat> for uh, looking for novel methods of intervention uh, as well as mechanisms of action um, uh, to treat the complications when they're present and impairing. And as Allison Motri said um, the other day, uh, what we're uh, looking for is treat something that will manage these severe behaviors when they need to be managed. Uh, we're not talking about treating every child who has, who is on the spectrum, but those who have severe impairments. Oops. Uh, so there have been some, um, <clears throat> there's been a lot of interest in cannabidiol over the last um, eight or 10 years. Um, CBD and then other uh, cannabinoids. And there have been a lot of uh, anecdotal reports um, by parents, um, family members, um, adult patients, um, and um, and then uh, that that CBD in various forms uh, has been beneficial uh, for some of the symptoms of autism, and there have been a, a, a several clinical trials, almost all of them observational, and uh, what that means is that uh, the parent or patient goes out and buys CBD at a, a dispensary, at least in California. Uh, I don't know about where, <clears throat> there are many places you can get it, most places in the country. Um, but they'll uh, go out and buy it um, and give it to their child and then the uh, person running the study will uh, ask how the child has done with the uh, with a compound they have, and this is this is uh, uh, so so um, the heart of an observational study is really to uh, observe what happens when you give a child or an adult uh, CBD from any number of different sources. Um, 
it's open label. Most of the studies have been observational and uh, open label and have found uh, positive results in a number of areas. Uh, there's in, uh, improved uh, sociability, improved communication skills, reduced uh, aggressive behaviors, reduced irritability. Um, but these are all um, uh, open label and uh, for the most part even without, uh, uh, without a placebo. The one uh, double-blind placebo-controlled uh, study that has been done uh, was done with a, a couple of different uh, CBD compounds and um, was uh, blinded and had a, a, a placebo, but, uh, and, and in that study, uh, they actually did not have a, a strongly positive result. In fact, the results were um, for primary outcome measures uh, was, uh, were negative, uh, although uh, clinical impressions were that the uh, children, that uh, many more of the children improved when they were on CBD. The other problem with the studies that have been done before is that um, it, it has been shown that if you uh, get CBD from a variety of sources, um, and a variety of brands that uh, the amount of CBD that is labeled on the bottle has nothing, may have nothing to do with what is actually in the bottle. Uh, in, in a lot of, uh, in, in one study of something like 30 different formulations of CBD, 70% uh, of them had lower uh, amounts of CBD than uh, were labeled on the bottle, and uh, and then a few had much higher doses. Uh, same for other compounds uh, in the formulation. Um, THC amounts uh, are much higher in some than in others, and um, so uh, it, there's really so much variability that it's difficult to tell uh, what might be beneficial and what what might not be. The other, uh, the other thing is the previous studies have uh, studied only very high functioning individuals who could co <clears throat> cooperate for test testing and, um, and so we don't know anything about uh, whether CBD would have any benefit for children who are more severe uh, and, um, and have more severe behavioral issues. So this study um, that we attempted was, uh, or that we completed, uh, was a double-blind, placebo-controlled crossover study uh, of CBD in the form of Epidiolex, which is the only FDA-approved cannabidiol. It's, the benefit is it's, uh, it's uh, very highly purified uh, from the cannabis plant. Uh, it has <clears throat> uh, essentially no other um, measurable uh, THC in it. Um, it has um, no toxins in it. And, um, and it's the same dose, the same amount from batch to batch because it's uh, very highly regulated. Uh, so we used Epidiolex and we used uh, a placebo that was the same that was used in the epilepsy studies for Epidiolex and it uh, tastes and uh, smells uh, and looks the same, it looks identical to the active drug. And our uh, goal was to uh, obtain uh, indicators of improvement in behavior, language, and social interactions uh, with CBD compared to placebo. Uh, for the study, we used boys uh, with autism aged uh, 7 to 14 years. And uh, these were uh, children with the most severe behavior problems. 
uh, aggressive, self-injurious, and very repetitive stereotypic behaviors that occurred daily or multiple times a day in most cases. And the reason for using boys only was that this was a small study. Um, boys and girls uh, with autism present differently. Um, and um, the targets for improvement uh, were likely to be different. And so rather than mixing for a small number uh, of uh, individuals, mixing uh, two groups that might have very different targets, um, we started with boys only with the intent to go to girls after that. Uh, and the study design was uh, to do baseline testing of all the children. Uh, and a baseline testing included a, a number of questionnaires that parents filled out, um, a number of tests that were administered by uh, the research coordinators, uh, and uh, clinical impressions, a neurological exam, uh, and um, safety blood tests uh, and an EKG. Uh, and they also received an EEG and we attempted MRI scans on all of them. Uh, they were then randomized uh, to either uh, placebo or CBD uh, with an eight week escalating dose starting at five milligrams per kilogram per day for the first week and then 10 per kilo per day the second week and then 20 per kilo per day uh, for the third through sixth weeks, uh, through eighth weeks. Uh, they were then retested with all the tests they had uh, at baseline. Uh, there was a four week washout during which they had no treatment. They were retested again at 12 weeks and then crossed over to whatever they had not been on the previous time with the same escalating dose and then at the end of eight weeks of that, they were retested and, and treatment was discontinued. So as I mentioned, in addition to the, uh, the testing, they had physical and neurological exams uh, and blood tests and ECGs that were performed every one to two weeks during uh, the study. Uh, the questionnaires and cognitive testing were uh, done at 0, 8, 12, and 20 weeks. EEGs and MRI scans were attempted uh, at the same 0, 8, 12, and 20 weeks. So uh, we had, uh, the goal was to uh, complete 30, 30 children uh, for the entire 20 weeks, and we did do that, um, and this is the data, but not on, not just on the 20 children, or I'm sorry, the 30 children, uh, but we uh, actually entered 43, and so this is uh, data on all 43, uh, and um, it was between seven and 14 and a half years, and we had a, a good distribution of um, uh, race and ethnicity. Um, and I know you can't read this, and uh, that's, it's not really important to read it. The bottom line is that uh, in terms of adverse events, because uh, we were looking at safety, of course, also, uh, we had 76 reported while on CBD and 55 while on placebo. Uh, there were two um, uh, serious adverse events, and neither of those was related to treatment. Um, we had uh, most of the, or a, a, a number of the um, adverse events also uh, were not, uh, were deemed not related to treatment. Um, and the uh, ones that are of note um, were, and I can't see that, but the, uh, oops. take this just for a minute. Uh, so the uh, difficulty sleeping, uh, which uh, actually occurred more often in the CBD group than in the placebo group, seven 
reports versus two, uh, uh, increase in aggressive behavior, seven reports uh, in, in each group. Now those aren't seven children, actually. Those are seven times that they were reported. So uh, this is a little bit misleading. Uh, but the other thing, uh, and the only other uh, notable things were um, diarrhea, which was more common in the CBD group, and uh, increase in self-injurious behaviors, which was more common in the placebo group. And uh, I think this is due to their coming off of CBD and going back on placebo and, or going on placebo. And, uh, and that's when we were seeing these increase in self-injurious behaviors. Uh, in terms of uh, tolerability, all of the children were able to take the uh, tr study drug without problem and uh, all achieved uh, measurable blood levels of, uh, of CBD during the time they were on CBD. And uh, what you can see here is uh, this is the placebo group, uh, it's a pl group that started placebo first. They had no uh, uh, CBD in their blood at baseline because we, we definitely wanted to check for that in case they had been on CBD when they were not supposed to be, uh, but uh, they weren't. And uh, then when they were on uh, CBD, um, as we escalated the dose, the uh, blood levels went up and reached steady state. Uh, between four and six weeks after uh, starting the treatment. And uh, in, uh, individuals who started CBD first, they uh, did the same. They uh, went up gradually as the dose increased and then reached steady state over the, uh, or seeming steady state at least, over the, first, uh, the uh, last few weeks. Um, and this is just a metabolite, the lower graph is just a metabolite of the CBD. Uh, showing a, a parallel pattern to the CBD. Um, we did not detect THC in any of the, uh, of the children uh, during the course of the study. So the results, uh, the results were, are, were, are still being analyzed, uh, first of all, and um, so I don't have the results for a lot of this, uh, but uh, what I can tell you is that the results uh, were mixed. Uh, so we found a large placebo effect, and <clears throat> um, uh, our primary outcome measures, uh, which were uh, um, the um, repetitive behavior scale, uh, the um, um, ADOS2, um, were, uh, uh, were <clears throat> excuse me, not met. Um, but what we did find was that there was a, a big improvement with CBD in reducing anxiety and reducing self-injurious behaviors and reducing stereotypies. And we think that the reason that we didn't meet the primary outcome measures was that they were too broad to, to isolate uh, these particular uh, features and we were able to isolate and find those in the secondary outcome measures. Uh, so this is a, uh, just an example of the repetitive behavior scale. Uh, uh, total score um, using a mixed effects model. Um, and um, this is showing, this is zero, so this is weeks zero to eight and weeks 12 to 20. Uh, so breaking down the first eight weeks and second eight weeks to see whether there was any difference. Um, which there wasn't, but, um, and this uh, orange line was placebo and the green line was CBD. And uh, the lower score 
uh, lower the score, the um, more improved they are. Uh, and what we found was that uh, here's the placebo effect. The placebo groups uh, improved, um, but the uh, CBD group improved more than twice as much as the placebo group. Um, <clears throat> and um, uh, the, the CBD group uh, improved uh, very significantly between a baseline and eight weeks in each of the two um, time periods. Uh, this was uh, one of our secondary outcome measures, uh, child anxiety scale, and um, <clears throat> the reason I wanted to show this is I think it really shows um, uh, nicely what what happened, what they did. Uh, this was uh, zero uh, baseline, eight weeks, 12 weeks, 20 weeks. Uh, and the solid line is the CBD group first. Uh, they, they started CBD first. And you can see this big drop, which was significant, um, between zero and eight weeks. Um, so anxiety was significantly reduced uh, over the course of the first eight weeks. And then, then they plateaued. Uh, and <clears throat> interestingly, they didn't go back up uh, to their baseline, but they stayed plateaued at a, at a lower level of anxiety and did not improve, <clears throat> excuse me, did not improve further uh, with placebo. <clears throat> and the, <clears throat> the placebo group, um, started um, and in <clears throat> excuse me <coughs> the placebo group um, uh, improved very minimally this was not significant uh, in the first eight weeks but then uh, in the second eight weeks they also improved significantly on the when they went on CBD uh, and uh, it paralleled the, the uh, first eight weeks CBD. So um, I think this really nicely shows the um, improvement in anxiety uh, in, uh, with CBD and not with placebo. Uh, so uh, we have a number of, of other um, tests that show um, improvement in anxiety, uh, reduction in anxiety, reduction in self-injurious behaviors, as I said, and, and uh, uh, reduction in stereotypies. Um, and we're continuing to, to uh, go through all of that data. So we've got a massive amount of data to analyze. Um, we also looked at um, or are going to look at several me measures that assess neural function. And uh, EEG, we haven't begun to really analyze yet. <clears throat> MR spectroscopy, uh, oops, we are looking at. Um, and um, and <clears throat> what we're looking at is neurochemicals that might be altered by CBD. Um, so we're, we're comparing baseline to, oh, We're <clears throat> comparing baseline to, um, uh, to treatment, eight weeks of treatment with CBD. <clears throat> and <clears throat> we're looking at um, uh, these other uh, uh, things as well, structural brain imaging, EEG, looking for possible <clears throat> changes in um, EEG spectra, background rhythms, and also eye tracking. Just going to show you one result from the MRI MRS study. <coughs> and this is for myoinositol. Uh, myoinositol is a, a brain chemical that is thought to be involved in neuroinflammation. Uh, so the higher the myoinositol level, the more 
presumably the more neural evidence of neuroinflammation there might be. Uh, and this is uh, the um, results of uh, eight uh, ch of the children for whom we were able to get readable data uh, on MR spectroscopy uh, at baseline without CBD. Uh, and this was after uh, eight weeks of CBD. And what we see is uh, a very significant uh, reduction in myoinisetol levels uh, in the brain with CBD. Um, oops, do I have another one? No. Okay. Um, so this is intriguing and suggests that it's uh, possible that CBD might be uh, having an effect on neuroinflammation uh, and reducing neuroinflammation in the brain. So um, we need to pursue that further. Um, and um, I feel like I've left out something here. Yes, here we go. Um, so to summarize what we know so far, CBD seems to be safe and reasonably well tolerated. Uh, in boys with severe autism with maybe a little bit of diarrhea, but none, nothing that was severe enough to cause any change in treatment. Um, we had uh, two children who had elevated um, liver function tests and um, we uh, lowered the dose uh, and both of them came back to normal. Uh, we, had, we were able to obtain measurable blood levels for CBD in all of uh, the participants. Um, and, um, but there is a wide range of CBD um, following oral administration of, the, of this dose of 20 milligrams per kilogram per day. Um, and although primary outcome measures were not met, uh, secondary outcome measures demonstrated results that suggest that CBD may be effective in reducing anxiety, repetitive and self-injurious behaviors in particular in a group of boys with severe autism. Um, the study uh, was, as I may have, it was underpowered uh, to detect differences, both because uh, we had the small N and, and also because of the substantial placebo effect that uh, really uh, did wash out some of the other effects that we, um, <clears throat> that we think were probably uh, there. <clears throat> and one, um, intriguing potential mechanism for the CBD effect uh, that we did see uh, might be reduction in neuroinflammation. Um, I think the study underscores the importance of uh, uh, doing placebo-controlled and blinded studies, uh, especially for a condition like autism where we know, and it's been demonstrated in other uh, clinical trials uh, with autism, that there's a huge placebo effect. Uh, and it uh, highlights the need for further well-controlled studies with a much larger cohort uh, with uh, varying doses of CBD, uh, obviously with inclusion of both males and females, and also with more targeted um, um, primary outcome measures. Ours were too broad, um, and I think the problem uh, was with us and not with the CBD. Um, so what I learned from this study, uh, I, uh, this, this study actually took five years from conception to completion, not including the data analysis, which is going to take another year at least. Um, and um, it, we started, we entered our first participant right after the, the uh, COVID pandemic began. So we had <clears throat> uh, all kinds of, uh, of difficulties, challenges with this study. Um, but, uh, and I learned a lot from it. And one of the things was never underestimate the power of placebo. Uh, it's really important to do this kind of uh, study with, with a placebo. Um, and then um, another thing is that uh, uh, all, and I didn't mention this, but some of the tests that we did had a floor effect because our, our participants were so severe. 
um, <clears throat> they were so severely impaired that we had uh, it, the measures were actually unable to um, to get scored low enough because of that, uh, and um, and although the the goal of trying to find a useful therapeutic tool for children with severe autism, I think, is a good one. Uh, the floor effect really uh, uh, also um, affected a lot of our results. And, uh, <clears throat> and so future studies really need to utilize measures that specifically target uh, very uh, certain behaviors other than looking for measurable improvements on standardized tests. Um, um, we are getting around, uh, we're starting to get around this by looking at not standard scores, but uh, looking at uh, raw scores um, because <clears throat> the, uh, uh, the children scored so low on things that they're really, that's a, a probably a more appropriate way to, to, uh, to look at it. Um, the next thing I learned was don't try to answer every question in one study. Um, and um, this, is, this is just the beginning. We need a lot more studies, but <clears throat> trying to answer all of them uh, really uh, just made it even more difficult. Um, you know, one of the problems with, with uh, this is that because cannabis-containing compounds uh, and cannabis-derived products uh, have been, uh, it's been so difficult to use them, uh, because of the limitations uh, imposed by the government uh, and uh, legal restrictions. So we know very little about dosing, uh, about pharmacokinetics, <clears throat> and other relevant variables that need to be taken into consideration when embarking on a study. We, are doing, we did do pharmacokinetics. We haven't finished the analyses yet, uh, but we did do uh, pharmacokinetics on, on this on, in the study, uh, so we will have some evidence, some information on that uh, in in the autism population, which is important because it may not be the same as pharmacokinetics in the epilepsy population. So um, that's it, and this, these are uh, my uh, acknowledgments, uh, funding support again, and then. Uh, all oh, my collaborators. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Conner. Um, I want to open the floor for any questions. Um, all right. Yeah.